Happy New Year, mudlarking friends. It's great to be back. And it's a bright and frosty one out here on the Thames today. Look at this. All right, guys. Well, it is frosty. Colder than a witch's what's it. And uh, it's epiphany. Happy epiphany, everyone. I'm down here on the foreshore. Let's see what I can find today. An interesting piece of slipwear here. I just stopped to have a look at it because most of the slip has actually come off and you can see the fabric underneath. You can see that is the edge of a large plate or charger perhaps. There's the rim there. And you can see it's got a pie crust effect edge. So that's interesting for those of you who wondered what the Staffordshire slip comb, combed slipwear looks like underneath the glaze. There you go. Cool, look at that. That's a whopper. Not entirely sure what that was for, but it, do, it doesn't look that old to me, actually. And there aren't any significant marks on it, but cool piece of lead nonetheless. It might end up in my bag. And what's this? Little piece of tin glazed wear there, delft wear. Tiny fragment of tin blaze in there. A bit more tin blaze. There we are. Quite a lot of this about today. Lovely patina on there. Here we go, some kind of fossil imprint there. Looks like it could be a crinoid that was in there. Interesting. You can see the foreshore here just fairly covered with redware. Now I'm always turning these over, I'm always searching for an interesting piece of worked bone. Oh, I love this stuff. Look at the detail on there. The salt glaze, stoneware. And there's a tile, a roof tile. Looks like a bit of an older one there, actually. Been through the walls a bit. Another big chunk of Staffordshire. Combed slipwear. And the combing refers to this, the method used to get this pattern. Combing tools through slip, dragging it up there. All right, I just thought I'd check out these little bricks here. They haven't moved far in a few months. They've been gathering, but they're slowly making their way down to the river. I'm still with my mask because actually it's serving as quite a good heating device. It is so cold out here today. I mean, really brass monkeys. Here you go, one for anyone doing up their house. You need a little bit of checkerboard here. I'm your girl.
quite a sweet thing. I would take it home, but uh, frankly, I can't quite be bothered to carry it. What's this? Large chunk of redware. Redware rim, in fact. The large vessel. This grey here is where it hasn't been fired at a consistent heat all the way through. You can make out some glaze on there. And uh, yeah, there we go. Now I've spotted the area I'm going to is empty. So I'm gonna race over there right now. I'm gonna make my way down to the hotspot that I've got in mind and I'm gonna concentrate on one area today. I've been doing that a bit recently. I've not been moving around so much. So let's see what the river has in store for us today. I've just got down here and as I do, rather than heading straight over to my number one spot, I'm just pausing here a minute because it looks kind of promising. Um, I'm going to stop here and have a search through this little lot and see if I can turn something up then head over to my spot known as the promised land. Immediately I can see some pins there. Immediately pins so time for me to have a little search. You can see there all the pins again pins everywhere there they are in great concentration i've started my new collection and oh my goodness me there are cat hairs on me everywhere i go that's my cat walter there new pin collection there here oh faithful what have we got Corset busk hook. Looks like quite a late one. I'll get some of that stuff off and see if there's anything on there. Lots of pins though for you pin fans. Lots and lots of pins. And there we are here. Point number one. Modern but let's see what else turns up. And we've got another modern lighter. Very modern, can't have been in here very long because it would have been rusted by now. This is half of a tomback button. So that's a good sign. And that's where the button shank was. But anyway, that's a good sign. Now this here is interesting. A little piece of lead I just flicked up. And what's interesting about it is this printed, this pattern on here. It looks like a mount or decoration. But that is interesting. I haven't found one of these in months. There we go, little air gun pellet. Wonder who's been firing that down here illegally. There we go. I usually find them all squished where they're impacted, but not this one. All 
right guys it's turning into a bit of pottery day unexpectedly i mean you can see how cold it is i am just trying to cover every part of me nice little piece of strainer or drainer of some kind redware and look at those really perfectly formed triangular holes there to drain i wonder actually if this was maybe part of a pattern rather than a functional hole. Let's check that out. Another lovely type of slipware. And you can see here that the slip is really quite raised. Beautiful stuff. Here's an early piece of earthenware, most likely medieval. This fragment is part of a jug handle. The style is known as a rod handle. I'm focusing on this piece and will indeed take it home for my collection as you get a real look behind the scenes, as it were, to its construction. Look here. You can see where additional clay has been built up and around the rod handle. And this overlapping clay part here, which was then smoothed down into the exterior of the jug, made up the handle itself. You can even make out a couple of score marks on the flat surface here that attached to the side of the jug. Now scoring the pieces of clay help when building and binding together. It was then thumbed along and down the outside to create this decorative element to the rod handle, which would have once looked something like this. So that's a nice little bit of handle there and you get to see how it's been constructed. Right, my little goose barnacles, it is so cold out here and the tide you can see is coming right up. I just paused to show you this. It's an enormous strap handle piece fragment. I'm not sure you can really see it. So what I'll do I'll clean that up and then put the info on the screen. Now, this large piece of medieval greyware is zooming up the charts to be my favourite ever piece of pottery. I love it. Dating from circa 1190 to 1270, it's possibly a Hertfordshire product. Get your head round that. 1190 to 1270. What madness is this? I've just recovered a piece of 800 year old pottery from the River Thames foreshore. What I love about this, apart from its age, is patently obvious. Check out the chunky, carefully constructed rope type of decoration, this braided part here, on the jug handle. Now the handle itself is in the strap style and you can see here in the recess that the rope decoration is sitting in. It was also stabbed in various places. These little holes here are known as stabs and you often find stabs and slashes in jug handles and as jug decoration. The raised edges of the handle, and again this is more thoughtfully considered decoration, I absolutely love this piece. It's just smashing. Fabric-wise, it feels almost like dried lava. It's a very strange fabric, and I had to double-check with the pottery legend, Richard Hemery, to confirm what this fabric actually is. It feels something between stoneware and earthenware, and like I said, it feels like dried lava. A very strange-feeling fabric. Now, if you take a look at the inside of this piece, so this would be the inside here, you can see clear finger marks. Now this is where the potter has put their hands into the opening of the jug and smoothed down the inside walls like this. Check this out. So they've made this motion and you can see that it's left behind on the fabric. It's crazy. 
as I said, hands down, this is my favourite piece of pottery that I have ever found. Now, last but not least, the third best piece of pottery I found today was this fragment of Siegberg drinking vessel, which dates from circa 1350 to 1500. Now that's a trio of medieval pottery for us today, and I hope you're all as excited about it as I am. Whether you're a pottery fan or not, you can't deny these pieces are incredible, not least for their age. It really is cold out here, it's sandy, it's muddy, it's all the things you really don't want when you are looking for items. Um, yeah, but in any case, we found some good stuff, so I'm not complaining, but it, yeah, I am complaining a bit, but never mind. I found this little piece of almost certainly Bartman jug, looks like base to me there. Um, that's a nice little bit of detailing there, salt glaze. There we are. And I'm just having a look around this area here. Alright guys, well we are really struggling against the elements down here today, but you know we had some good finds nevertheless. I am really looking forward to the sun coming out again and us having some springtime and summertime mudlarking adventures, so hopefully they will be upon us soon. I will see you down here in a couple of weeks. Until then, take care, be merry.